So Richborough, wow, you can come through here. There's a little gap there. That must have been another gatehouse. But there's a sign here. We'll read this. All enduring monument. Wow, look at that. Richborough, the capital of Romans, 1722. So this is how it looked in 1722. William Shankly drew Richborough in 1724, showing the forks, walls, the circuitful, the, the cruciform outline of the arch remains, and the amphitheatre. Now look, that's, there it all is, and there's the amphitheatre. That's the amphitheatre. So that's over there to the left. We need to go to that. So, Richborough's great walls have stood strong for more than 1,700 years. By about AD 380, the fort was protecting the coast from Anglo-Saxon raiders. Intent upon plundering the riches of Roman Britain, the incredible discovery of 20,000 coins from the period AD 395 to 402 shows that Richborough was a thriving and wealthy community until the end of the Roman rule. Around AD 402, Rome stopped paying Britain's, stopped paying Britain's soldiers amidst the chaos of a civil war in the Emperor's Rome. Ruling Britain ended by AD 410. Over the centuries, the fort ditches filled up with internal buildings collapsed or were removed. But the high walls endured and made Richborough an exigent monument to Roman Britain, capturing the imagination of visitors for centuries. The small gateway called a postrum was incorporated into the side of the tower. It was designed to protect to project forward from the line of the walls, allowing soldiers with bowls, javelins and catapults to fire at attackers. The masonry of the north wall shows that builders took pride in the construction, using different coloured stones to form a decorative checkerboard pattern. By AD 400, the fort at Richborough was one of the 11 guarded uh, castles, forts, all on the southeast coast. They came under the command of senior military officer known as Count the Saxon Shore. And these are all of the forts. Look at that. Shine on, and that is the gap 